Good afternoon. I knew we'd get there eventually. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome back to Crafters TV. It is, of course, Thursday here in the UK. Oh, and now then, Thursday there. Ninth. Thank you very much. Thursday the 9th. Um, and we are live for the next two hours with our award winning, oh yes, award winning Craft Along Show where we do a real time project. And I say a real time project, but a project in real time for the full two hours. Um, and it's all about one of our latest releases. And this time it's all about our 3D folders and dies as well that we launched just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think just after birthday. I want to say just after birthday. Um, but we've got the craft along sorted and I'm really excited because it's a lovely lovely project um, and of course lots of other things to tell you about as well because if you did join us in wake up call you will know about a certain extra discount code that we are giving you today called Novdrop that's its nickname that's actually the code. It's the code that you're gonna pop into your uh, promotional code basket right at the very end when you get round to that checkout and it will give you a discount. Now, if you joined us this morning, up until just a couple of minutes ago, it was at 20%. We are now in the declining discount. It has dropped. It has not dropped, as our, <laughs> as our lovely producer Nicola just told me then. It absolutely has. But it's not dropped too much. So it's still a fantastic discount. And it is 17%. It's now at 17%. We're setting it all now to 17% that lasts from now up until 8pm today. Which, of course, means everything that's coming up in our, craft, uh, in our cartload will be applicable too. So... I'll give you the details. Anything that you're checking out on today, anything, apart from a few items, and there's, there's the T's and C's that it apply to, it's basically the machines, is what we're talking about. But everything else, including everything that is in the outlet sale, and believe you me, the prices that are in there are off the chart amazing to start with. We've already had loads of comments in that morning show. Um, but you can apply that discount to those items that have already been Everly discounted. So if you did catch the early show, you'll know when I say the Dewar ink pads, real bargain at less than £2 per ink pad with the codes in there. So literally anything you want to get hold of, head over to the, sh uh, the, the website, shop the day, have a look in the outlet sale, have a little look at everything that you might want to just stock up on, whether it be cardstock or some other things, including lots of, lots of recent things, lots of core tools in there. And just at that very end, when you come down to that discount place, you're gonna pop the Nov Drop, N-O-V-D-R-O-P, and you will get the extra 17% off and that's with the outlet prices. It's also with your Club Inspire and then the additional 17%, which is just off the charts amazing. So do take advantage. However, we're not here alone. And I think I'm right in saying uh, the last time we worked together when I was in presenter mode and the other lovely lady across the studio, we were in a craft along session then. And it was the day before I went on holiday. So I remember it as clear as day. Uh, but of course, it is my. I love her to bits. If you've, if you've followed me for a long time, and of course the lovely lady I'm about to introduce, you'll know that we've known each other now for seven and a bit years. We've worked together in that whole of that time where we started our journey at Crafters Companion together at the same time. And it's my very dear bestie, crafty friend, my gorgeous oracle, I call her. She's the oracle of craft to me. Uh, but the very talented and the very lovely, lovely lady is of course our Jam Brown. Good afternoon, Jam. Goodness, what an introduction. I feel, I feel very um, humbled, I do. But yes, honestly, I, we say that. We say that we, we first met when we started working for the company, but it was one of those friendships, Debs, wasn't it? That was instant. instant. And now it's as if we've known each other all our lives. <laughs> and our, our paths don't cross that often now. We used to work together at the store, as a lot of you know, but they don't cross that often now. But when they do, we just pick up where we left off, didn't exactly. we, last time we saw each other? So yeah, it, I was delighted when I saw your name on the, uh, the listing today. But yeah, great to be back. Great to have you joining us. And 
and one of my favourite shows. I've never made any secrets about this. I love the aspect <laughs> of Craft Along. I love the whole idea of it, of being able to craft. We so often have Blue Peter style where we've prepared things at home and we've done this earlier and we've got one already made. I love the fact that we can start from the beginning and work through this with you guys at home together. So I hope there's plenty of you out there that are going to craft along. This is what we're going to make using our new 3D embossing folders and matching dies. And we're going to do a lot of technique stuff today. I'm not too worried about the card blank itself. If we get round to making the card blank, great. But I want to focus on the detail. There's a lot of work gone in here. We're actually going to be using the glycerine technique today. So the glycerine with the, um, the tricolour aquas. So we're going to use those to make the background. And I don't think, I've never done this in a craft along before. We've done it in demos and I've had a lot of people ask me about it that we'd actually do it for real today. You may notice that there's a bit missing out of my embossing folder. You know, I said I like chopping things up, so we're going to sort of <laughs> add a bit to it. And then we're going to carry on with those gorgeous aqua watercolour pens to do the colouring with. So we're going to do a bit of watercolouring as well. So I want to concentrate on that aspect of it. Putting the card together is very straightforward. It's a card blank with a couple of mats and layers and I've just put a bit of ribbon around it for extra decoration so it's yeah beautiful. not too worried about the actual card itself as always I do like to decorate inside but that is optional it's entirely up to you what you pop in there as is the sentiment I went along the thanks I was looking mainly for Thanksgiving because I know you guys over in the States celebrate Thanksgiving at the end of this month but my stamp was a bit too big for what I wanted to do so I just settled on the give thanks but it can be any occasion if you don't have this stamp set which we'll go through shortly you can put anything on there it doesn't have to be to do with thanks or with autumn it just lent itself to the nature I wanted to make my card for and it's very beautiful as well uh, so you know sometimes taking it back uh, and literally starting a project from start to finish is always great but when you get cards like that that look so incredible you want to see it in real life think it looks good on screen which is it in real life absolutely beautiful so i'm really looking forward to this um jan are you okay to do before we go into some thank yous are you allowed to do the shopping list i've for anybody? got my goggles i'm She's ready got goggles on i've got my goggles at the ready look so i can see do you know it's only like a, about two feet in front of me and i still struggle <laughs> so yes i've got my goggles on i'm all right so as far as product is concerned we're going to focus i've chosen the woodland foliage embossing folder and die set you can use any of the folders. We can do the same technique with any of them. So if you don't have that particular one and you have a different one, go for that. Tricolour aquas, we've got those on the show for you. So I've got the neutral, the essential neutrals, the floral meadow, the great outdoors. I think I've sort of mixed and matched between them. But again, whatever you have available. Duet ink pad in Awakening Forest. We're just going to add a little bit of that green ink around the edge of the, uh, the, the layer that we're going to create. And then I tread it to a coating of the spray and sparkling glow, the gold glitter varnish now again if you don't have this it's an optional stage so don't worry if you don't have any of the items you can sort of work around it a white gel pen you'll need access to a paintbrush and water we're going to use the glycerin now no, I know not all of you may have that and I apologize if you don't I did um, we did put it on the listings that went out yesterday I think um, I've used my oval nesting dies I chose I wanted a piece of background paper that was relatively um, not too fussy so I went for my I had a look through my paper pads I landed on the wildflower collection and I'm going to use the reverse side of one of those pattern papers Centura pearl um, in dark chocolate we're going to use the matting and layering in the dark chocolate and then additional pieces that you will need sort of the toolkit for want of a, a better way of looking at it the usual stuff the usual culprits your Gemini whatever cutting machine you're going to use with the plates access to a large guillotine the scoreboard scissors pokey tool pencil root pencil and ruler low tack tape watercolor card and then we've got it goes on and on I didn't realize my list was so long <laughs> I, I put things together they've put them all separately you see multi-purpose card if you're wanting to do I own I've used multi-purpose card for the card blank and the insert craft card all the glues I've put all of them on there I always do I think most of you have access to them within your craft space anyway gems and ribbon if you want to add the ribbon around it again these are optional extras and then the extra bits that I use I used I wanted something that was autumnal and I went for the autumn blessings which is one of the nature's garden collections and I've used my sentiment my gift thanks sentiment was from that stamp set but again whatever you've got handy along with some kind of stamping platform and I use the quick dry seal brown ink to go in with the colour tones that I'd used on the card. <gasps> 
Ah, oh, take a breath. I think that was all the list. <laughs> I do, most do. I don't like wearing my specs on telly, but it did make a difference. I could actually read things on there, yes. I tell you what, via Vario Focals have been a game changer for me because I can read everything now on the screen. It's lovely. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Jan. Uh, we'll say a few hellos to people. I'm going to introduce you to a special guest just in a second. Uh, but we've got a few hellos to say to people who are already tuning in, Jan, ready for ready for crafting along. Um, ooh, Nana Jan. I haven't worked with Nana Jan's show in ages. So excited to be here with you two lovely ladies that's our social media superstar today Susie T oh, uh, th that's hi, lovely <laughs> Stephanie Theodos says hello Jan Debbie CTV team social superstar and crafty friends from Farmingdale New Jersey good afternoon to you Stephanie uh, Marcella says morning everyone I keep forgetting you know we're into the afternoon well into the afternoon I keep forgetting it's still the morning for our stateside friends uh, so good morning Marcella Betsy uh, Black um, I said good morning from Houston Texas so excited with this craft along uh, Christine Mahoney, hello! That's, that's how she puts it, so I'm just saying it. <laughs> Again, beautiful ladies and everyone. Uh, Lynn Blackledge, of course, hashtag go live granny, as we all know, Lynn. Um, she says, good afternoon. Carletta um, says, good uh, hello, everyone from Arkansas. Uh, we've also got San Sandra Dundas, who says, afternoon, Debbie Jan, CTV crew, social media superstar, all my crafty chatty chums, as we speak. Hubby is at the door taking delivery of three CC boxes. Oh. Two outlet boxes full of full sorry and with the new scatter dies and then Rhonda Crowley uh, creations on YouTube says good morning Jan Debbie CTV crew team social and all my incredibly creative crafty friends from all over the globe from a sunny yet cold oak park near Chicago so good morning good afternoon wherever you are in the world and if you're in the future Sarah Brown good afternoon to you too <laughs> um, but yes of course we do have a very special guest I love craft alongs because not only do we do real cra time crafting but we also invite you lovely guys who put your names forward who want to come and join us into the show and I'm really super excited to be saying a very good afternoon or a good morning should I say because she's over stateside and it is one of our returning guests the beautiful the fabulous purple haired lady our gorgeous Jenny so good afternoon Jenny hi hi there Hi, my lovely. I know you've been having a few issues, haven't you, with the old internet. I'm hoping we can stay connected. Uh, but it's lovely to have you on the show with I us know. again. Are you looking forward to the craft along? Thank you. I am very much. It's been a while. It has been a while, Jenny. It has. It absolutely has. For those who don't know, how long have you been crafting, Jenny? Since I was a little girl. Which, you know, wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I love that one, Jenny. I love that one. Uh, whereabouts are you based, Jenny, for those people that don't know? I am in northwest Ohio, just south of Toledo. My goodness. So what time is it there right now, Jenny, then? Because we've got, we're nearly at quarter past three here in the UK. What time is it for you? About 10, 15 a.m too bad not too bad not too bad at all not not too early no. not like the the ridiculously early hours of the morning no. so you've probably had your breakfast and ready and raring to go fabulous yeah. we're open and we're going to keep us fingers crossed jenny that we can keep the um the you know we, we can keep you here with us uh, what we'll do is we'll keep coming back to you throughout the show um and checking in with you if there's any questions you want to ask you know that you know the drill by now just let us know and we can bring you back into the studio and you can ask any questions you want uh but for now jenny thank you very much and we'll come back and see you um in a few moments or so is that okay that sounds wonderful. Fabulous. We'll see, we'll see you in a moment. Um, right, so it is interactive. It is real-time crafting. Any questions you guys want to ask, if there's a technique you want to see in particular, what, or want to repeat, you know, a, a repeat of anything that our Jan's going to be showing you, please do let us know. Um, I'm going to try and stay as silent as possible, though. Just come in with a few comments now and again, because this is... This is, of course, our fabulous Jan's Craft Along. I will tell you that we do still have the said embossing folders and dies that you can purchase if you haven't already got um, at today at a fabulous, we've kept it at the launch price show. Now I say we've kept it at the launch price show, which was just a couple of weeks ago. However, that was October. The T's and C's for the um, 
decreasing drop, the, you know, the code that you're putting in there, is excluding anything from November. <laughs> and it, it, what was that? What was that? It is only one per customer. Thank you very much for finding that out for me, producer Nicola, because we were saying earlier we wasn't sure if it was one per customer or if it was a few sessions. So what we're saying is it is one per customer. Uh, however, you can take advantage of this deal and pop that nov drop into your promo box at the very end and you'll get the additional 17% off. I'll quickly go through these um, just for you so you can um, absolutely grab hold of them if you need to. We've got the fabulous floral bouquet. We're loving these 3D folders, but I'm gonna let Jan explain a little bit more about them in a second. You've got that gorgeous floral bouquet. You've got the under the water theme. I love this one, which is the coral reef. You've also got the fabulous Bohemian Dreams, a beautiful 3D embossing fold, extra dimension, extra sculpture, and of course that die that you can use separately or together to create even more stunning 3D features. The one that our Jan is going to be focusing on during this craft along is of course the woodland foliage. And then you've got the butterflies and blooms. And then lastly, the wildflower meadow. So six fabulous designs, six brilliant 3D embossing folders, along with those six matching dies as well, um, that you can take advantage of at that price, minus your Club Inspire, minus your 17%, if you haven't already used that code, NOVDROP. Think about what you're going to get if it is only one per customer per use, because there's plenty of things on the outlet sale that it will be applicable to. So make sure you, you savvy shop. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, right, we're going to, well, I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to throw it over to our lovely Jan to get this craft along started. Over to you, Jan. Right, okie dokies. I've got all my gear uh, in front of me. So I chose woodland foliage. Okay, which is the one with the toadstools on. Uh, like I said, if you've got other ones from this range and you don't have this particular one, what we're going to do today will work with any of the designs. So don't worry about which one you're going to use. If you have this one, great. If you've got one of the other sets, absolutely fine. And then I've got my selection of card stock. So we're going to make our own card blank. I've got the chocolate um centura pearl just to do some matting and layering i thought that sort of toned in with the autumnal theme i've got a little bit of craft card which is the piece that's going to go behind here so that we're looking through into the background and then i've got my watercolor card at the ready and then also like i said i sort of went through my paper pads i wanted something that toned in with what I did for the background, but I didn't want it to be too fussy that it drew your eye away from here. So I had a look through here and settled on, I think it was this one. So the front of it, if I'd have put this behind my design, I think it would have been far too busy and sort of clashed with what was going on but the reverse of it had the colors in so it had got the greens the orange tones the browns the reds in there that were all those autumnal colors so we're going to cut our background piece from that 12 by 12. if you have an 8 by 8 paper pad that's suitable then that will be big enough to cut down onto here as well okay so i'll pop all those to one side pop that down there for a second and i want to start normally i start i use i've said this time and time again that I normally start with the card blank build up the mats and layers and work towards what's what's going on top but I'm going to switch it round today I actually want to spend some time on this section with the die and the embossing folder because that's the bit that's going to be the focal point the the rest of it is just a card blank and a couple of matte layers okay so hopefully we'll get round to that before the end of the show but I actually want to start with what we're going to do with the the, the embossing folder and the die so first of all, I'm going to take a piece of my um, watercolour card. I worked on watercolour card for the background piece here and also for the die cut because we're going to use our watercolour, well, we're going to use our aqua pens as watercolour paints as such. So the, the watercolour card is suitable for purpose. So first of all, I'm just going to cut myself a couple of pieces of this and our embossing folder is a six by four. So six inches high, four inches cross. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces to four by six to work on. So just from my piece of A4 there, I'm going to cut the height down to six inches so that I've got that six inch width here to work with. And then I'm going to take a couple of pieces off there that measure four inches. 
Now, normally I would cut my pieces a little tiny bit smaller when I'm working with an embossing folder, but what I found with this one is that the detail goes pretty much right to the edges. And the first time I did it with my smaller piece of cardstock, I actually lost some of the design. So I thought, right, okay, learn from the mistake, and we're actually gonna pop them onto a six by four piece. So I've cut two pieces, six inches high by four inches wide. We're going to use one of those to go through the embossing folder and we're going to use the second one to cut out the die. Now if you haven't come across these before, I know some of you like to watch the shows and have a go later or if you're waiting on an order to come through. These consist of your 3D sculpted embossing folder and then a metal die that is actually responsible for cutting out the detail on that embossing folder. So this one's what we've cut the second piece for and we're going to cut that out out of that second piece of cardstock. So I'm going to work on the background first. We're going to come to the die cutting in a second. And what I want to do is add some colour again. Now, if you were watching this morning, you saw me use our duet ink pads to create some backgrounds on the smooth multi-purpose card. I'm going to mix it up a little bit this afternoon. I've actually brought um, my tricolour aquas. And again, I've chosen a couple of neutral shades. And I'm going to bring in my, now my glycerin's decanted into a, a little bottle, but it's basically the, you don't need a cooking grade glycerin. It can be the cheapest chip stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the glycerin to actually open up the ink time. Let me just pop that back over there so that I don't knock it off. Um, because the pens are made um, more for a colouring purpose as opposed to doing an ink background, we need to keep the, the ink wet for a bit longer and that's the purpose of the glycerin. So if you have this handy, I'm going to get together my glycerin. I've got a couple of sponge applicators, one for each colour, and I've chosen the pen that's got the chestnut um, desert and topaz in and I'm going to use that yellow topaz you can see I've got my sponge applicator at the ready for that one and then also I've gone for a more neutral tone this one's got slate flint and bark and I'm going to use the middle one in here which is the flint which is quite a pale brown gray shade and again I just want to create some color on the background and then when we've done that we're also going to bring in a little bit of that duet ink to just go around the edges and make like that vignette so Make sure everybody's got their card at the ready and they've got access to their um, bits and pieces, Debs, and then we'll get cracking with this background. No problem. Okay? No problem. <coughs> I was just going to say a few more hellos if I could, because our lovely uh, Pat's uh, Tychen Demarest has said, good morning from New Jersey. Quite late today, but I see you're working with glycerine. She was just asking about it yesterday. There it's like the perfect time. must have known. It's like you read a mind jam. Must have known, yeah. <laughs> I've never actually done this on a craft along before and I know we get asked about it a lot and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to actually show people how it works and let you have a go. So these are the ingredients then that we need. Cardstock, your choice of colour, all right. So I chose these to go with my background page. If you've got a different background, you may want to use different colours on your pens. It's entirely up to you. And I love to see the different variations when people have used different colours or different papers, different things. Maybe you're going to do it with a different folder, I don't know. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the pens and I'm just going to scribble some of it out onto my glass mat. Now, again, if you don't use a glass mat, you can use a piece of acetate or some packaging. You may have a ceramic tile, anything that's got that non-porous surface on there. So that's my yellow. And then I also want some of that mid-tone. Now, this is very, very pale. It doesn't actually show up very well on the, uh, the glass mat, but you will see that it does add a bit of interest to our design. And then all I'm going to do with my glycerin, as I say, I just decant it into a smaller pot so that I've not got to carry the great big one uh, around with me. I'm just going to put at the side of each one of these colours the tiniest, tiniest amount. And I'm talking like what we're looking at there, probably about three millimetres, little drop. And I'm going to do the same at the side of this one. You don't need a lot. If it gets too wet, you'll end up just moving it round and round and round and it won't actually do the job. 
okay and then I've got my respective applicators I'm going to start with the yellow and the first job I'm going to do is literally mop up the glycerin so first of all I'm just going to dab it round to get it all over the applicator and then proper sort of squish it round round and round in circles you're actually pushing that glycerin into the sponge applicator you don't want it sat on top I'm just literally squidging it round and round in a circle on my mat until all the glycerin's gone and it's literally soaked down into here you can feel that it's damp but you don't want it laid on the surface and once you've done that we can then start and pick up some of this ink and work that into our applicator okay and once you've got that I'm just going to tap off any excess like I normally do when I'm inking and I'm going to go sort of round in a circular motion not too worried about the center because we're going to cut the center away so what I'm actually going to go do I'm going to go down in the center because that bit's going to come away and then I'm just going to go round and enlarge that oval as if you've got like a glow now if you start running out of ink you don't need to add any more glycerin but you can pick up some more color from the the mat and again just emphasize so we're going to cover the majority of it in that lovely yellow bearing in mind that we're going to take an oval out of the center this needs to be wide enough to leave some of the color showing when we've cut that oval away okay and you can see how beautifully that glycerin allows you to blend it and I just this brings a whole new life to your pens okay so that's step one then I'm going to swap my applicator out for the other color and I'm going to do exactly the same again so with my second little blob of glycerin I'm going to dab it into the sponge and then literally squish it round as if you're trying to push it into that applicator just get it absorbed into that sponge and once you've done that again pick up some of your ink and then we're going to go around the edges with the and it's just you can just see it's taking the white away there but this allows you to use that ink and it goes so much further than if you were just picking it up with a paintbrush and coloring so you can see there how we've just tinted the cardstock i'm also going to grab a little piece of kitchen paper again for the same reason as i said with the ink this morning i'm going to turn it round now to do the other side but if i put my fingers on here to hold it now i'm going to get fingerprints in the ink so either a piece of scrap card piece of kitchen paper just something to hold it down pick the remainder of that ink up off the mat and we're going to do the same at this side so I'm just taking it all the way around the edge, blending it into that yellow that we put down originally. And you can see how we've taken the white away now from that design. That looks lovely. You can see even with the kitchen paper on, I can see where it's pulled a little bit of color. Yeah, so with your fingers, it takes even more out of it. Always add it back in. And then I'm just going to take my yellow one back again and just where we've gone overlapped just blend it out and you can just see how we've changed it now from what started out as a piece of white card and we've got yeah. that subtle color it doesn't want to be anything too definite just nice and subtle now I have put too much out there so I am going to just get rid of that bit first okay and then we're going to keep going we're going to add a little bit more to this so the next thing I want to do is just darken the edges a wee bit more so I'm going to bring that duet ink pad back in that we were using earlier along with my um, brush and again pick some of the ink up and I don't want to do a lot of this on here but I am literally just going to come the ink around the edges like so so again just very very gently in the corners and I like the fact that it sort of edges the card as well I've got that green edge all the way around the card We've had a so, question already, Jan. Yep. Uh, from Handcrafted by Gaz, our lovely Gaz. Yep. And he's asking, did he ask the, um, are these, uh, 
watercolour pen that you used and I'm assuming for the background because you've got your duet ink pad there but I think it's for the background piece that you just started with the yellow I think you might have just missed the beginning part oh, of it oh right yeah we yeah. did talk about this at the beginning of the show they're actually my tricolour a tricolour aquas gas which we've got on the show so yes they are a watercolour marker all right part of our colouring spectrum wall colouring range okay if I bring out my um here we go look yep so we've got three out of the four packs on the show today and I've just literally chosen a couple of colours to we've use We've actually on here. got, I think, the tricolour aquas in the outlet sale and I think they're all the colours that are on there, you can go and check it out, but they're $6.99 or $10.49 but obviously the outlet sale, these aren't, an old, these aren't a latest product, you could get the Nov Drop code Absolutely. and pop that in and get your additional 17% off which is the next discounted level don't forget this is discounting a, a declining discounted day so that's the discount code as it stands right now up until 8 p.m tonight which is that extra 17% off so i hope that answered your question uh, gaz yeah so because this is a water-based coloring medium now we can come in with our spritzer again so if you've got access to the little misters or a water spritzer or anything like that just like we did this morning i'm just going to add just a little bit of water to it and leave it for a second or two. I can actually see here now that it's starting to move. I love how it sort of makes the patterns in the ink. Very, very clever, it just moves it around. And like I said, the longer you leave it, the better result you will actually get with it. So again, just gonna clear up the excess. And then once you're happy with the movement on there, take your piece of kitchen paper or whatever you've got handy there and just blot. So this soaks up any excess water and it will pull out that colour from where the water's had chance to work. So again, when we remove this, you can just see how you get in that sort of speckled kind of effect. Now I've got quite a big patch of it there, but we're gonna cut a piece out of the middle, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, and then I've still not finished. You know me with my mixed media, it's like it's all about the layers. So we've got this far. And again, you may not all have access to this, but if you have, I've actually, and this is a really old can. I know they've changed the cans now. So I do apologize because I've had mine that long that it's still in the old style can. It now, well, let me just see if we've got one across here. Yeah, they're now branded like this with the purple on. So if yours looks like this, it's the same product. I've just had mine in the back of the cupboard for quite a long time. And although I do <laughs> use it, you don't use a lot of it. So I brought my old spray box with me, my very technical piece of equipment. <laughs> and it's going to go inside there. You can see there. Give this a shake. And it doesn't need a lot on, to be honest. It's just going to have little short, sharp bursts on there. OK. And then we're just going to leave that for a second to dry. Oops. Put that down there for a second. And all it's done is just add a very, very delicate layer of sparkle. It's still wet at the moment, so it'll not pick it up totally. You can see where the card's wet at the minute. But when it dries, it's just got a very delicate haze of gold sparkle in there, which just adds to that background layer. OK, so I'm going to leave that to dry. The next thing we're going to do is cut an oval in this. All right, before we put it through the embossing folder, just for a little bit of an extra feature. But I, don't, I want it to dry off a bit first. So what we'll do is we'll cut our second piece. So again, Debbie, I just want to make sure everybody's got to that point with yep. the, you know, if they are going to spray it, yep. just leaving it there to dry for a second. Fabulous. And then we'll come back and we'll do the die cutting. Lovely. I'll come to, uh, I'll come to a couple of comments as well, because I've noticed some comments coming through. Yep. Um, and then we might take a little short break and then check back in with our lovely Je uh, yep. Jenny. Um, so Cheryl Han Telsford says, I'm back with Jan and Debbie. Lovely to have you, uh, Cheryl. And she's a little wavy hand there. Love the little wavy hand one. Uh, Beth Metzger says, good morning from a cold North Dakota. It's slightly snowing again today. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. We, it's getting we to had, that time of year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we haven't got the snow just yet, uh, Beth. Thank goodness. I know. The one weather I ate the most is snow. Just because in Britain, it's a, a, seriously, we're not made for snow. We come to a grounding halt whenever a little... <laughs> Flicker or a, a flake few flurries of snowflakes, and that's it. Everything <laughs> stops, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so wherever you are, I hope you stay safe, uh, Beth. Uh, Deborah Spencer on Facebook says, "Hi there, Jan. So good to see you. You look marvellous." 
What did I tell you? She went all in Ballysterly with me. And honestly, people are, people are commenting, so I'm going to tell you. You do look blooming marvellous. I don't like making a big deal out of You'll it. You'll behave it's not me. yourself. <laughs> you should be yeah, exactly producer Nicola. You're in such a good job, you should be proud of yourself and oh, you look amazing. Thank you guys. Uh Christy Mahoney on Facebook, she says this is a great craft along, not difficult, but gonna learn so many techniques. Perfect. So I'm glad um that people are agreeing uh, with what we've said all along. Uh, Lillian Quok says hi, Debbie Jan, the CTV crew, and everyone watching. Olga Vasquez on YouTube says hello everyone at work. Ooh, what you doing? Olga, don't get into trouble. She says, but must see the dynamic duo looking lovely as ever. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We'll take all. We'll take all the compliments. We'll take all the love. It's lovely. You go on cloud nine, don't you? When you come on here. I know. Literally. Yeah. Um, Lucine Smith says, "Good morning from Kissing Me in Florida. Spent the morning doing yard work, treating myself to watching you two talented ladies for a couple of hours. Thank you, Lucine. Trish Lassell says, "Good day, crafting friends from Reno, Nevada." Uh, Vanessa says, "Good morning from Florida." Dara Robertson, hello from. Oh, I don't know this one. Caruth of Seville. <laughs> Teeth back in, Missouri. Right. Caruth of a <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not pronounced like that, and Daryl, I've made a right mess of that one, so I do apologise. I'm not very well travelled, Jan. No, neither I, only, I. I can only not pronounce the places I've been to. Um, Stephanie Vieira says she loves the wild power, uh, wildflower collections of papers. Our gorgeous Shadaya's in the building. She says, good morning, Nana Jan and Fab, Deddy, uh, Fab Debbie. Thank you. Uh, Taylor Sugg. Get this, Jam. Good afternoon, everyone. Just use the discount oh, on fabulous. the special papers. Oh, so the nice discount one. codes. Yes, they were due. That's through um, October launch, yes. weren't it? Yeah. So um, I'm loving that you've got hold of those um, because seriously, those but those papers, Taylor, are just divine. So to get that extra discount on, I think is absolutely fabulous. Um, we've got a question. Uh, so J Jane Quayle on YouTube says, hello everyone, does the glycerine work with the shimmer ink pads? You shouldn't need it with the shimmers. Uh, the ink pads are made up slightly differently, so the ink should blend without it. I wouldn't be adding glycerin to our ink pads at all. It is just the fact that the ink in the pens is literally in a pen. So if I'd have coloured directly onto my card, if I just use a scrap of this and actually colour straight onto it, you'll see how much difference taking it straight from the pen to what we did on the cardstock. There is a massive, massive difference. But you shouldn't need to add. I think if you start adding glycerin to inks and things like that, certainly wouldn't put it anywhere close to your ink pad. You shouldn't need it. The inks from the ink pad should blend without actually adding anything to them. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. So I hope that helps, uh, Jane. Um, right, we're going to let that project, that little piece, because obviously the spray does need a few minutes just to dry. So I think it's a perfect opportunity uh, just to pause for a second, let you all catch up. And of course, we'll check back in with our Jenny in a moment. But we'll just have a, a quick short break. But please do make sure that you tune back in after this and come and join us for the rest of the Craft Along project. Hi, I'm Ben from Crafters TV. As you may know, we've just launched an amazing new website our new home of Papercraft to house all of your crafty needs. And as we've had a bit of a makeover, I'm here today to show you how to check out Crafters TV on our sparkling new website, including how to watch live, catch up with previous shows, and how to view the latest schedules. So, let's get started. First, go to the Crafters Companion homepage. Select the correct location at the top of the page. Click the Crafters TV icon on the top right hand side of your screen. To watch the show live on the website, click the Watch Now button in the middle of your screen. You'll be taken to the relevant show page where you can watch the show, shop the show and shop the day at your leisure. To view the Crafters TV schedule, click the View Our Schedule button in the middle of your screen. You'll be taken to the TV schedule where you can browse each date plus all of the shows that are on that day. You can then click on each show to be taken to a page where you can watch and shop the show. If you want to catch up on a previous show, hit the catch up button on the purple Crafters TV bar. Then you can scroll down to see all of the previous Crafters TV shows from recent days. 
If you're looking for something specific, you can click the craft expert, craft area, shows and date filters just above the list of shows. Take a moment to browse until you see the show you want to catch up on, then click onto the show. You will then be taken to the catch up page where you're free to watch the show and check out all of the crafty goodies on our shop the show and shop the day pages. Enjoy. If you love Crafters TV, we've made it easy for you to watch us wherever you are. Whether you catch us on your tablet or take us with you on your mobile phone, it's easy to watch us anywhere. From here to here. Maybe don't watch us here. It would be easy to watch us here. Probably the easiest place to watch us is here. Crafters TV with you wherever you are. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the going as a customer, come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me, personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family and welcome back um, and we're going into the next stage of our craft along we are doing real-time crafting with our lovely jam um, and our very special guest jenny as well who i can see is back at a, a screen now we were going to say hello to her and then she disappeared so we were like oh no what are we going to do but we're going to we're going to throw over to our lovely jenny and see how far she's uh, with us in this craft along uh, good afternoon jenny we were wondering where you disappeared to I had to run to the kitchen to get a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> we did notice because we're like, oh, where's Jack? And we're like, where's Jenny gone? I can't see her. Um, so it's lovely to have you back with us. How, how are you doing so far, Jenny? Are you um, up to speed? Have you, have you at the same stage? Yes, I didn't have any glycerin and um, I don't have the spray that she used. So yes. I used, um, I just used my, um, inks to do just a wash and then I use shimmer sprays oh perfect Absolutely. yes oh Beautiful. that's gorgeous yeah I this love is that what with I the mean shimmer about sprays. using what you have yeah that looks lovely yeah. yep absolutely that's brilliant so so well then basically jenny you're ready and all caught up as well probably everybody else is as well i'll say a couple more hellos in a second because i can see uh, that Anne crafted by gaz has said he can't wait to give this a go he's going to use the nautical theme one yep. and do something similar with it as well um love, there's some lovely comments coming through guys i'm just going to tell you right now there's some lovely comments we've got Syl sparkly on youtube she went debbie makes me happy oh jan makes me happy sheena makes me happy 
You all make me happy. Oh, Isn't that lovely? Lovely. Absolutely lovely. So thank you for that. Um, Trinkles Garden and Home Life. Good morning, everyone from Irene in Georgia. Um, morning, ladies. Hello, fellow crafters. Wishing everyone a wonderful day, says um, our lovely Kathy Leah. Uh, Evelyn Keith uh, on Facebook said, um, Deb Debbie and Jan, you were absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. And uh, Linda Lucine Dement Smith. Whew, that was a long name, Linda. Um, I've actually been playing with the exact dye all week. Uh, posted my first make yesterday. It fits no so nice into the five by seven uh, shadow box. Absolutely, Lovely. it does perfect. Yeah. Uh, right, I'm gonna stop talking because I'm conscious of time and we want to get this project. I know, it flies by, away. doesn't it? It flies by, exactly, Jan. Uh, so I'm going to throw it back to you, lovely, for the next stage. Right, so in that little break, my cardstock's actually dry enough to work with now, so I'm not too worried about that. So I've got my stitched ovals here, and I've just, mine are in a slightly different packet just for storage purposes. They take up a little bit less room because I've had these, but these are a go-to, I must admit. I have got my circles on one side, and my ovals on the other. Now I've just got to remember which size I used and I'm going to guess at that one. And I guessed right, <laughs> yes. So if you're using the same ones as me, from the outside, one, two, three, four, it's the fifth one in from the outside edge. And all I'm going to do is pop this in the centre of here. And it's just going to add a little bit of difference to it. I just sort of thought, yeah, I can see all that foliage just sort of popping into the, the centre here. So we want to try and get this as central as possible. So I'm going to eyeball each side and the same distance top and bottom, roughly. If you want to measure it, you can. But I'm just going to sort of look at it and think, right, that looks about even to me. I've got an equal distance here and here. And I've got about the same distance at each side. And then I'm going to tape it down, but I'm going to tape it into the center because this is the bit that we're going to take out. I don't want it to damage any of the inking that I've already done around the outside. So I'm going to put the bulk of my tape inside the oval. And then we're just going to very quickly pass that through our Gemini. So normal set of plates there for the Gemini. Pop that one in. Pop my shims in the middle. Top plate on and we'll pass that through. And that's gonna take out an aperture out of the center. Hear the strangest things in my ear. You do. I, do you know, when got I, a cobweb in her drink. I, 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 I was did you like, manage what, that, Meg? <laughs> <laughs> Where did it come from? Oh my goodness, the things you do here, Jan, oh, they don't half, seriously. If we, I wish we could sometimes tune them into the studio so everybody else could hear. <laughs> so we don't actually need this part. I could save this, maybe use it to stamp a sentiment or cut a smaller oval out for a sentiment if you need it. I'm just going to pop that to one side. And then we've got our piece good to go. So this next stage, it's going to go in the embossing folder. So you're looking for the side that has the raised surface on and it's the side that has our logo underneath here you can see where it says crafters companion at the back so you want the colored side facing away from that so that this raised area pushes up through the colored aspect of the card so i'm going to trap that inside here try and get it as straight as i can she says with a piece poking out the edge there we go and then we're going to pass this through our machine as well now i've just got my junior plates here but because this is a 3D folder, we need to adjust our plate sandwich if you're using the Gemini. So I'm going to remove one of my white or my clear cutting plates. I just need to keep one of them with the magnetic shim. And then I like to put my folder on top here. I've kept hold of this all the time to keep it in place. And then I'm going to use my frosted shim just on this occasion as the top one. And then pass this with the hinge first back through my Gemini. That's going to transfer that lovely embossed area. Now, yes, we have lost a bit of the design by cutting the aperture in, but we're going to bring that design back with the layer that goes over the top. So again, if we take this out now, you've got the first part of our embossed piece, which looks lovely. So, and I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. That's going to be my layer there. Okay. So next stage is to take the second piece of um, watercolour card that we got ready earlier and I've got my die on here now, okay? So I'm going to actually cut this one. So again, I'm going to pop this directly onto my cutting plate. 
I've got my shims in between and I do need my top cutting plate back for this one. And we're going to pass this through the Gemini once to cut. And then we're going to put that die cut back into the embossing folder to transfer all that lovely embossing. Now, I did try two ways with this. In fact, I tried more than two ways. But with the watercolouring, I actually tried watercolouring the flat image and then embossing it. And then I tried it the other way around. And I settled on the fact that I preferred to do the embossing first, purely because it gives you much more detail with regards to where your colour wants to go. So again, you know, try it out, try different ways with things. But for this, what I wanted to do, I'd got much more definition as to where the edges of things were with the embossed detail on it. So we just need to get rid of those landlocked pieces that are inside there. There's quite a few of them. I'm gonna take the die out and then we can see where they are better. So once you've released it, just very, very gently tease it out of the die. There are some very, very sort of thin frondy pieces in it and you don't want to damage them. So just ease it out and then you can see where the rest of those little pieces are. We need to get rid of the little landlocked pieces that are in the middle there. Okay, so we've got our gorgeous die cut piece now. Get rid of the, uh, the bits off there because we're gonna need to use this again. And now we've always concerned ourselves with the raised area of the embossing folder, but I actually want to flip this round now and I'm gonna use the sort of, if you feel it, you can feel the indentations where the, the two meet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece that we've die cut and I'm gonna flip it over. And you'll see that it lines up beautifully and just kind of locks. If you press it into those areas where those recesses are, it just sort of locks itself into place. You can feel where it is underneath. And once you're happy with it, Hold it in place. She says moving it, you know. There we go, it's wriggling about. <laughs> so get it in place, make sure that it's, it's set where you want it to be and then close the other half. And once you've got it closed, keep it held together, don't let it go. But you can see in there now that we've got that white area underneath where all that gorgeous embossed detail is. Okay, so I'm now going to pop this back in, remembering that it's the embossing folder, so we're moving one of the plates out of the way. So I've got my mat there. I'm going to pop this down on here again with that shim as my lid, and we're going to emboss the die cut this time. So that's going to pass through my Gemini, or whatever machine it is that you're using, and that's going to create all that gorgeous emboss detail on the die cut piece. The, 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 the actual theory behind this was just ingenious, it really is. When we take this out now, you've got the most gorgeous embossed piece there. I don't know, you can just pick up some of that detail. You can see where the, um, the tops of the mushrooms are. You've got all the veining in the leaves there. Absolutely stunning. And this is the perfect size now to fit over the top but we're going to get all that lovely leaf part of it, the foliage going into the aperture, okay? So the next job, once we've got this far, is to start with the colouring aspect. So we're going to bring in our colours to do what we've got here. And again, I did this with my aqua markers. So I'm just going to bring those back up to the top for a second and have a look. We need... Um, the greens, so I'm going to get my two sets of greens out, which are in the ones that we've got on the website today. And I used that same one that I'd used on the background, which was the slate, the flint and the bark for the toadstool stems. And then we need the red one, which I believe was the burgundy. It was quite a deep red. Yeah, burgundy, tan and sepia. It was the burgundy one that I've used for the toadstool head. So I think it was just those four pens that we need for colouring, if I remember rightly. And what we're going to do with these now is I'm going to bring in my little pot of water and I've got a paintbrush at the ready as well. So this is one of our Royal and Langnickel. This is the number six. 
that I'm going to use with these. Alternatively, if you want a sparkly finish, you could use your sparkle pen with your aqua markers to pick up and use this as your brush. I'm going to stick with the plain one today just for, uh, for this purpose. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in a scrap of the watercolour card that I had left. And I'm going to put my piece over the top here. And what we need to do now is think about what colour scheme. So if you're not doing this particular dye, if you've got a different one, I know um, we've had the nautical one mentioned, but whatever it is you're using, choose the pens that have got the colours that you need, and then we're going to start with some of those. So I'm going to follow the lines that I did on my sample one. And we did the very... Um, the bright green one, which I believe was the bud green. So again, I'm going to put this out onto the mat and then we're going to use this as our paint. And this is really, really straightforward. You're literally transferring the colour onto the card. A couple of ways of doing this. You can actually wet your cardstock first. So just with the water, you can add a little bit of doesn't need to be wet through but you can add a little bit of, of water onto the area that you want to colour and then pick up from here and add it and it'll just allow it to move around a little bit quicker excuse me <laughs> do you know we have the strangest noises going on in this studio oh dear you were heckled by a lorry honestly Two. Who said it's Julia? Oh, what are you two like? That was definitely not Julia. She was, she was literally, we've got um, a bit of an industrial state. Julia's coming, she's not happy. She's Hang on a minute. <laughs> I never said a word, Julia. I never said a word. I never said a word. It wasn't me. It was the two in the gallery. Uh, yes, yes. It was definitely, we've got an industrial estate behind us where there's lots of lorries. It was not Julia. Just disclaimer, it was not Julia. very inappropriate timing, some of them, aren't they? I know they, they are. <laughs> I had to laugh. I was watching the other night when Craig, Craig. was on and all the fireworks were going off and they just ended up, Ben was just stood with his arms folded. <laughs> they were going off for what seemed like forever. Oh, dear. Yeah, so I am no artist. I am a crafter. I am not an artist. I am literally just getting that paint down onto the leaves where I want it. And I've literally just, for want of a better word, daubed it on there. I've put the piece underneath just to stop it transferring. You can see where I've got it on here. The card will absorb it, the mat won't. Mm. And also, when you're doing this, pick it up and have a look because when it's against a, a white background, you can't always see, but I can see now where some of the edges haven't quite caught the paint. So just pick it up and have a look at it and go round those edges with your paintbrush just to make sure that there's no horrible white edges you want it to look as if the whole thing's colored and you can see there where my paint's got a little bit less intense so i'm just going to go with a, another coat over it and i'm not too worried about adding too much definition on this so what i've done is i've done one section at the top there and then i'm going to sort of go a little bit further down i think with the same color and again there's no right or wrong with this you know, just literally get that colour down there. Just avoid the toadstools. And if you need to add a bit more on here, you can pop a bit more colour out. Has she been to tell you off? Oh. <laughs> Our Julia's sorting them out. <laughs> So you can see I am literally just following the outline of the die cut and adding that paint on there. And then again, I'm just going to lift it and make sure I can see there. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to have a play with the colouring. I'm just going to hand over to our Debs for a second and we'll come back to this shortly. Absolutely, it's already looking brilliant. Seriously, looks absolutely incredible. I love, I could, she says she's no artist, but I don't agree. Seriously, <laughs> absolutely fabulous uh, colour in there. 
Right, so you are joining us for our craft along, literally our craft along with our 3D folders and uh, dies for anybody who's just joined us. Um, and I think, I, I think to be fair, I'm just going to go straight back over to our lovely Jan for the continuation because I can see it already coming together. We will go back to our lovely Jenny, who is our guest today um, during our craft along. And I will, I will throw back to Jenny, but I can see she's busy colouring herself. I've got her in the uh, corner of my eye so I can actually see her um, and she looks like she's busy crafting away uh, so I'm going to throw back to our Jan because I can see she's got another colour out I have I'm use. just going to alternate the green so that it's not all the same colour so I've gone to the other pen now and this is actually the moss green which is the darkest one of those three so we're going to get a little bit of a, a contrast so I'm going to come in with the fern aspect of it here now and again just add a little bit of water first and it ju I just find that it helps that ink move around a little bit you'll see once it goes on there it almost runs into all the little nooks and creases crannies. in the mm. um the embossing so again once i popped it down you can see it shoot along the uh the the, the, the sort of die cut piece there where it's following that trail of water now there's lots of ways of doing this um this is the way i tend to go with it and again, just make sure that you're not overlapping into that area that's already been coloured. And again, all I'm doing is just covering the die cut. I've not done anything fancy as far as shading's concerned. I think that's the difference, though, between your watercolour colours to the um, alcohol mediums that you, I think is a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more yes. easy to apply. It is. And as I say, you don't have to be an artist, you know, because you've got the quality products to work with. It makes it very, very straightforward to actually achieve a finished effect. Mm. And then I'm going to bring that same green down to the bit that I've left at the bottom here, just so that we've got some different greens. Now, just adding the water now, there is actually a lot of colour in my brush, but it, it is I have just literally added that water to it again. We can always go back and add another layer if you want to darken it down a little bit, but you can see there. And again, I keep lifting it up just to make sure I've got the edges where they've beveled in the um, embossing fold. I just want to make sure that I've got all those edges and there's no white area showing. And then the largest section at this side, I'm going to do in the same colour, just again, so that we've got a few different greens going on, like you would expect to find in nature. So I'm just going to bring my piece of paper in there just get rid of some of that excess green and then I'm going to come and I've turned the artwork round so that I can get to it instead of trying to work at an awkward angle just move it around so that you can get to where you want to be nice and easy so again added the water and you can see once can you see how it moves when you add yeah, that, that colour yeah. into it it just travels better than going I find onto the dry card but as I say, entirely how you want to. If you're used to working with watercolour, you figure that out. You do your way. This is just how I choose to add it. And you can see I'm not being particularly careful. I am literally just painting it onto those die cut areas. Again, I'm just being a little bit more careful where they join the other leaves because I'm going to change the green again shortly for that last little bit. So again, adding that colour in. Don't be afraid to just pop a little bit more out if you're running out of colour. But this will use so much less of your ink than going direct to your cardstock with the pens. Mm. You only need a little bit, don't you, to go a long way? Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree with that one, Jam. Although I must admit, I'm loving that because I would have normally gone in and picked the water up with the with the colour and then gone into it. I like that way that you're doing it. I, I just like find it moves it around more and you don't get that solid sort of block of colour where you first put the, 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 the mm. brush down. But as I say, I'm no expert on this. You know that my go-to is usually alcohol colouring, very much so. Uh, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different today. Again, I'm just checking that I've got all those edges. I can see there, there's, there's a little white piece there. Make sure you've got all the edges of those die cuts. And then that last one, I'm going to change my green again. I'm going to go for, this one is the lime, so it's quite a yellowy 
um, olivey green type colour. And again, get rid of some of that dark ink out of here. And that last little section here, just going to add the water again first and then pick up that lime green just to get a contrast. And it really is nice and simple to do. It's not what I've done there isn't difficult. I have literally just added colour where those die cuts are. Again, just going to lift it a little bit because I can see here that I've got the odd bit where there's still a little bit of white cardstock showing. Okay, oops, lost a leaf. Can add that one back in later. Okay, so we're not doing too bad there. Right, looking, it's looking lovely. Yeah, absolutely lovely. Would you dry it at this stage? Would you use like a heat tool to dry it, or would you let it dry naturally? I just let it dry as I go along. Yeah, I've got looks. it a little bit too wet where that one's just popped off there, but we can always add that one on separately at the end. It's I'm not too worried about that. Oh, look, that is looking really, okay. really lovely. So I'm going to get rid of the green. Oh, we've got a little bit more green at the bottom. Let's do that bit while I've got the green inks out. We'll change again to a different one. This is actually the bud green. Just different shades, as you would expect to see in nature. They're not all the same colour. So again, just get rid of that surplus. And then there's a little bit down at the bottom here. And if you're not sure on what, uh, what bit's what, we always tend to put the detail on the packaging. So you can see here at the bottom where there are just a little bit more foliage down at the bottom. So use this as a reference point. If you're not sure and think, mm, well, I'm not quite sure where to put the colour, I can see that there's some leaves there. I've got a little bit of grass there. And there are a couple of leaves at that side. And there's one just there. So again, picking up that colour and just pop that down onto that foliage. Got a little bit at the back there. I've got two on that corner. And I've got a tiny little bit of grass that comes up in front of the base of the toadstool on that one. Again, just checking that I've got all those edges of the die cut where it's all beveled. And you can see we've got that bottom section. I think we're just about there. We've got a little bit in there and a little bit in there. Okay. And then we'll get rid of the greens and we'll bring in those other colours. Now, one of the secrets with watercolouring is, is to make sure... I know you've just asked as to whether I'm going to use the heat tool on it, Debs. You can if you wish... Uh, I think mine's dry enough to continue, but if you've got an area that is particularly, you know, I've sort of skidded around from here to here and changed places. If you work straight onto a piece where you've just finished, there is a chance that the colours will bleed into each other if it's still wet. So bear that in mind when you're actually picking which areas you want to colour. I'm actually going to do the mushroom stalks now because they're not really, there's only that little bit of green at the bottom that it's touching. And for that one, I'm going to use that tone that we used on the background, which was the flint. Now, again, it's very, very difficult to see on the mat. But you it saw... almost looks like there's no colour, doesn't it? It does, but you saw how it changed that background that we did earlier. So, again, just for those little mushroom stalks, I'm just going to bring that colour in there. So it's just a case of matching one that was quite realistic. And then underneath the caps of the mushrooms as well there and again I'm going to go all in the same colour to start off with and then we're just going to add a tiny little bit this is the only bit really that I'm going to do much shading on just to give them a little bit of uh, shape so we've got that base Going on there just pick up the last of that color I can just about see where it is and add that to the bottom and then also in that same pen uh, was it the same one or was it 
can't remember which colour I use. I'm going to go to the tan colour, which is in the burgundy, the tan and the sepia. So this is actually a lot darker, so I don't want to go too heavy with it. I'm going to wash this out quite a bit. And then just down one side of them, just add that little bit of shading. So again, make sure you've got plenty of water in it and wash that colour out so that it's not too dark. And just add. So under the caps would be a bit darker and down that one side. Like so. Okay, and if you get too, too much of a definite line, like these two are a very, um, there's a proper stripe in them. I'm just going to go in with the water and just wiggle that brush down there and it'll blend it back into that first colour. Yeah. That looks lovely. Right, Almost, with those. Uh, but before you've even added the red, it looks like it's popping. It looks like you pick one of those mushrooms out. It it's is, isn't it? It gives them sort of character, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. as if they're not flat anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and that's before you've added red. So the last bit, and I've purposely left the red while last because it's probably the darkest of all the colours. So obviously, to come in with that first, it's going to sort of if it bleeds into the other areas, it's not easy to get rid of. So again, I've left this while last, and I'm going to come further up to the top to start off with. So again, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of water just to wet those toadstool caps. And I'm going to go right, there is a highlight on the toadstools, but I am going to go across the whole thing with the red. And then I'm going to come back in with my gel pen to actually pop the white back in. So again, just taking this all the way across And I actually left this to dry and added a second coat because I wanted the red to be quite vibrant. So again, just get it down there. Make sure you've got those edges. Like I've checked all along to make sure that we've got the edges of the die cuts. I'll check all that in a second. Once I've got that colour down, we can lift them and just double check that we've got that in the right place there. So get the colour down first. And then we'll check the edges. And then by the time we've done that, the first one should be dry enough to go over a second time. So just lifting it straight away, I can see I've got a little bit of a white edge there. I've got a little bit of white going on in that one. You don't see it when it's laid flat, but then when you pick it up, you can see that there's those white yeah. elements where it's been die cut. It's because the dies bevel the edges. So just make sure that you've got those. And then again, we've now got space up here that's actually started to dry off. So again, I'm just going to bring a bit more depth from one side like so. And across the bottom. And instantly, that has just given it depth and dimension. Just gives it that shape, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It gives it that. You, I, I feel like again, you've just given it that curve, that yeah. that rounded feel to it, that three D feel. Even though it's got the three D embossing, I just feel like you've given it that full, full roundness to it, that that real life dimension. And again, if you're not keen on where those two parts are, just dry your brush off it. Not not totally dry, but so that it's not wet. And then literally just where the two lines meet, I'm just sort of wiggling that brush and it just blends that deeper layer into the one that was already there. So that you've not got those harsh lines between the two coats. Now then, if we turn over my scrap, although I think the green was on the other side, wasn't it? I'll pop it on there so you can see. You can see now that we've got that detail coming on really really nicely now i'm going to leave that all to dry before i come in with my gel pen but i've actually got a white gel pen that i'm going to come in and do the little highlights on the toadstools once it's dry if you don't have a gel pen and you've got the acrylic paint markers from crafters we can use the white acrylic paint marker works well i think most of us have got those gel pens in our stash 
And then the last thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this very, very, very gently. I'm not going to bother inking up again, but the brush that we used with the green Dewar ink that we did the outline here with, I'm just going to use what's left on it. And just from that outside edge, literally just dust a little bit just to give that definition. So I'm just coming from the outside there. It'll pick up a little bit of the emboss detail, but it just gives a bit of definition. If you do need a bit more ink, that one's actually got a little bit dry under the studio light. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more, but tap off the excess. And what that will do is highlight some of the areas maybe where the veins are in the leaves. Just be gentle with it so that you're not disturbing the die cut. But it's just brought that little bit of definition to where the veining is in there so that you've got that detail. I'm not going to go too bad at the bottom. We'll just bring a little bit up from the bottom there. And that's my pretty much, I think we're pretty much finished apart from the white section um, on there, which I'm going to do shortly. So I'm just going to leave all that, make sure that it's completely dry before we do any more to it. Amazing. I'm going to have a little break. Yep. And then I'm hoping that we can get that card blank uh, put together to lay all this on. Now right. then, Over I was to just you. going to say, yeah, no problem. Thank you, because I've got some comments. I say I've got some comments. I'm just going to tell you, I think everybody just went into like a jam coma <laughs> literally just watching jam even i was i, I forgot to stop talking because i was like <laughs> I, I just watch it i love to watch you jam and um i think sherry smith just summed this up to perfection beautiful so she's put all oh, bless it's beautiful thank um, you lois um on youtube says looking how uh, look how lovely the coloring is already it is it looks absolutely amazing um jane quigley on youtube says she would be tempted to pop a little fairy behind that I would be as well. I'd be, I would be. Absolutely, um, yeah. If you've absolutely. got those. Handcrafted by guys. He's popped on there. Oh, my God. Jan's turned this into a build a build scene. Because that's exactly what we've done, just by adding that little oval yeah. into the centre and those that fo foliage <laughs> going over foliage. the top there. Um, just looks absolutely beautiful. Um, we've got a little... Oh, I feel like a little goodbye thing coming on here. Should I hear? On Facebook. She said she's just made her last purchase, Fab Debbie, before I leave for vacation tomorrow. She won't be seeing us live now for the next three weeks. Oh, Shadaya, we're going to miss mean, you. We, we, we definitely will miss you, absolutely. Oh. You need to remind me. I know you told me the other day, but I've slept since then and I'm terrible for retaining information. Has, that's quite clear when it comes to foliage. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good at retaining that information, so let us know where you're going, Shadaya, um, because she said she's going to be catch, uh, watching us to, on the catch-up because uh, she loves us all to bits. Oh, bless. Well, I hope we'll you have a you fabulous too. vacation wherever you're going. Um, but yes, and... Oh, love the colour for the mushrooms, Jan. Sil Sparkly on YouTube. What pen were you using for that mushroom colour again, please? Right, so out of my aqua markers then, I chose the one that we used in the background, which was the slate, the flint and the bark. And I used the middle one, which was the lightest one, which is the flint for the stems or the, the, whatever the stalks, whatever they are. And then I added a little tiny bit, just washed out, of the tan from the middle of the burgundy tan and sepia one just to get that bit of definition down one side of those and then that lovely burgundy red shade on the end of that one is what i've used for the toadstool caps thank you very much okay fabulous absolutely fabulous uh, lots of lovely comments coming in um Eliz uh, alison's put um so alison Al oh, my terrible for saying surnames i do apologize alcalay on youtube i think that's how you say that she's put isn't it lovely to see something come to life before our very eyes uh, she says thank you jan this is the beauty of crafting isn't it, it? And is, this is what yeah. i like about crafting you take a piece this was white cardstock just over an hour ago yeah and this is what you can come up with you know it's sort of you take it on whatever journey you wish but we just literally started out with plain white cardstock and this is where we've got to this one once we're sorted is going to overlay over that background that we've created like so absolutely yep. beautiful can't wait to see this come together really can't wait to see it come together uh, we're going to join our special guest jenny in a moment or so uh, but for anybody tuning in who hasn't seen these before because we launched these a couple of weeks ago uh, at the back end of the birthday um 
a fantastic price. £80, $90. Um, again, the platinum price in the purple box, we've got at £64 or $72. However, we've got the declining discount. Nov drop. Are we ready? Are we ready? Nov drop. The declining discount. <laughs> it's now at 17%. Little, little... Little clock up there. It's a big clock, that actually. Um, a little clock up there telling you that the 17% discount will drop down even more at 8 pm here in the UK. So it's the perfect opportunity. Now we've got clarification. It is a one time code only, one per use per, sorry, one per use per customer. I think that's the right way to say that. Um, so make sure you take full advantage when you are popping things into your basket. There are a ton of things on the outlet pages we've got a great we've got a great craft cartload cartload is debbie not craft vault cartload going up at 6 p.m here in the uk with amazing prices i'm going to go over a couple of the deals but you know what's lovely jan these are in there you I can know. use your 17 percent off i cannot believe it i'm saying this on a literally a brand new launch just a couple of weeks ago and um, so literally just pop that knob drop into the promo code at the very end of your checkout and it'll do it automatically for you we won't do it though so unfortunately if you haven't put that code in we can't be responsible it's your responsibility to pop that in there i'll keep mentioning this throughout the rest of the next show as well uh, to pop that code into there for you but i'm just going to quickly flick through those designs for those people that haven't seen these and who may want to take advantage of that uh, declining discount code as well as their club inspire membership um, and i'm going to start with the one that jan's using right now which is that beautiful woodland foliage it's beautiful absolutely beautiful you've seen that come together before your very eyes we've got the floral bouquet so it's those gorgeous florals taking center stage whether you use the embossing folder on its own or the die cut piece on its own it's entirely up to you bring them all together you'll create more depth and dimension and as you've seen with jan they're they're beyond 3d these they're absolutely exquisite we've got the coral reef we've also got the fabulous bohemian dreams we have the absolutely stunning wildflower meadow and then lastly the gorgeous butterflies and blooms so that's your six designs the six uh, folders and matching dies that uh, you can op absolutely pop into your uh, embossing folder i think what's been an absolute rip roaring success today where people have been taking advantage of this and if you caught the early shows when the discount was at 20 percent you'll totally get what we're going with our duet ink pads jan's touched on them in a very brilliant demonstration this morning on wake up call however she's used them in the show as well there are duet ink pads it's an hybrid ink pad this where you've got water reactive but a bit of pigment in there as well so that you can do lots of things with them for me i think they're probably one of the most versatile ink pads that we do in our collection all 12 all 12 for the price that you're seeing on screen 35 pounds or 53 dollars and these are the colors that i'll quickly go through for you before we continue with jan's craft along we've got rosy apple sweet clementine we have the sunshine glow and lemon meringue so those beautiful red and orangey tones going through to the golden yellow then underneath we've got the spring bud sorry spring buds awakening forest sailor's wake and waterfall you're not choosing any of these can i tell you you're getting all of them all 12 and right at the very bottom you've got the midnight mist soft ever vintage merlot and raspberry ripple all 12 colors for that price that you're seeing on the screen you're not seeing things in the purple box if you're a club membership at 20 percent if you're a platinum member 28 pounds or 42 dollars uh, 42 wait a minute 42 dollars 40 but in addition to that the 17 percent we've already seen some amazing prices if anybody's getting them right now at the 17 percent discount don't let me know we knew at the 20 percent they came down to 21 pounds for the full set there's plenty of ink pads on the outlet sale go and have a little look on there these are incredible ink pads that offer you as a crafter so much versatility as you've seen with our jan so far now we're going to take a short break we will come back and join our jenny because i can see she's busy busy away there and that mean that must mean one thing she's ready to share with us what she's made so far uh, but before we go to that we're going to take a quick break please do make sure you join us in a couple of minutes and we'll be back to finish off that beautiful project that our jan showed you at the beginning What makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're they're um, 
really skilled at what they do. And they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crofters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the product. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. The community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. What makes Crafters TV so special, 100%, is the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, the people obviously the people not just here at crafts companion uh, but the viewers that watch us i mean everybody we have this real magical essence about it bye for now bye Many of our viewers bring it up time and time again, and that's our wax seal seal gate. Thinking though, it might not work as well because I've put too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've forgotten to put me um me thing in place. <laughs> because I have a way of words, but I think that doesn't engage with that and can come out all wrong. Water. That, that wasn't the one you just washed your brush in, was it? Sorry, yes, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it wasn't, was it? It was. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm going to have to say, it's a slip of the tongue. I'm going to say it's maybe to do with my Scottish accent. I'm maybe going to say it's because of Mr. Uh, ben Mosby. He is, well, yeah, he doesn't help matters. Oh, fire my Um, I've made pots that have exploded when I fired them. I've done zips in inside out. It happens to everybody. We've all spilt our glitter all over our project or knocked the water over. Do I? I've just noticed I've got my dress on inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was messing about doing some backgrounds with the sparkling, took the lid off it and managed to catch the pot somehow and the whole thing came towards me down my front, across my lap, onto the floor. I went to reach for the water and, you know, do the, the, the tapping with the, the... And so there was less tapping and more sort of a tsunami. Um, <laughs> I've got some... <gasps> Welcome back. I'm telling you now, that last bit, Rochelle, always cracks me up because it's the reaction on her face is pure horror shock. Bless her, there was not nothing been rehearsed. Here long, she? <laughs> she wanted to be with us a short while. She knows I love her, but honestly, seriously, you couldn't you, you couldn't write that stuff. I you know. could not write that We've stuff. We've all done it though. We've we all have done indeed. It. We have indeed. Um, lots of lovely comments coming through saying how brilliant. Uh, we've had a question though uh, from Kathy Hornberger on YouTube says, did Jan use watercolour cards? Sorry, Absolutely. she missed the beginning. Yeah. Yes, we started out right at the top. The both layers, both the, uh, the ink layer and the die cut layer were both watercolour card, purely because we were using watercolour products. So it's the best card for the job. Perfect, thank yep. you very much. Uh, should I got back to us, Jan? She's off to North Carolina to my big sister. Oh, And lovely. she's spending her birthday and Thanksgiving with her. Absolutely lovely. Have, Have a, a lovely wonderful time. time. Yeah. We will miss you. We will indeed. Uh, Barbara says, thank you very much for repeating the colour names, Jan. And no Jane Quigley on YouTube says, absolutely fantastic price on those ink pads. They're winging their way to me for sure. Absolutely. Definitely Get take advantage. They're on offer. They are indeed. Now, we're going to join our Jenny because we are living 
literally into the last half hour and we've, we're quite aware we've got a card to get together. Uh, but we're just going to join our Jenny and see where Jenny is um, up to in the stages uh, of her craft along. How are you doing, Jenny? I'm doing good. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, that's looking lovely. Can we go big screen, James? Are we all right to go big screen so we can see that more clearly? Oh, thank oh, you. Wow, look at that. Good job. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. That background came up perfect. Yes. And this is exactly what I mean about using what you've got in your stash. Absolutely. That's a sterling mm -hmm. job. Yeah, just because you didn't have what I had hasn't stopped you crafting along, Jenny. Fantastic. It oh. looks amazing. Yeah. Absolutely Thank amazing. You. Right, we're ready then to get into that next stage. Are you ready, Jenny? I'm ready. Good. Re let's get on with that last stage of the craft along then and back over to you, Jam. How did it get to half past four already? I know, I know. <laughs> How on earth did it get to half past four? Right, I'm going to whisk through this bit because we have made so many cards, boxes, projects on craft alongs throughout the time that we've been doing them. So I've actually got a piece of A3 cardstock that I'm going to make my card blank from, uh, just purely because I can get the whole thing out of that A3 sheet there. If you don't have A3, you can cut your two pieces and like we've done many times before, just join them together in the middle. But what I'm going to do with mine, we're making a seven and a half inch card blank. So I've got mine in on the left hand side. I'm using my big score and I'm just going to score down here at seven and a half inches and pop a score line in. Now then, this one's actually our Centura Pearl. At home, I use the multi-purpose card stock. But I did forget to bring my A3 piece. So our Julia, bless her, just magicked some Centura Pearl. I says, I don't suppose you've got, and she just went in a drawer and there it was, <laughs> bless her. So yes, we've got the Centura Pearl here, which will work equally the same. It'll give it a little bit of touch of luxury with that pearl edge. So I've now got my seven and a half width here, and then I'm gonna bring in my guillotine and chop that down to seven and a half for the height as well. So just to take the little leg out there, I'm going to pop this in my guillotine now and I'm going to pop it with the open edge in first and I'm going to line it up at seven and a half inches and I'm just going to make one big cut through the whole thing here. So we've now got that seven and a half inch depth. All I need to do now is just trim this edge. So again, the little bit that's left over, I'm going to line up at seven and a half Make sure that I'm on the outside edge there and then just trim this so that we've got that seven and a half inch square. Now, if you don't have that size of cardstock, I would cut one seven and a half inch square and one seven and a half by eight inch and then make yourself a half inch score line mend it off to make a glue tab and just stick the two together in the spine there so that you've got those two pieces. So that's going to be our card blank at the ready. Then I'm going to take my piece of Centura Pearl in the brown and we're going to make our first mat. So because the card blank's seven and a half, I'm just going to come down. Um, I think I came down a little bit more actually than... Uh, yeah, I'm going to come down to seven. I normally need a, need a quarter of an inch, but I'm going to come down to seven inches for this one so that we've just got a little bit more of the white showing around the edge. So seven inches square on there just to make our mat layer. And that's going to go on the front of the card like so. So you can just see we've got that nice border. It's a nice frame size, that Just no, around Jan, the outside, it? yeah, the quarter of an inch sort of takes it to about that kind of, um, can't yeah. see it over the top of there, can you? Yeah, whereas yeah. just leaving that little bit extra has just left me a bit more around the edge because I've got the room to play with. Now, out of this piece that we've got left, there should be an, enough there to make a six and one quarter by four and one quarter mat. So I'm going to take it down to four and a quarter inches, like so. And then I'm going to cut this at six and a quarter. And this is going to be our mat layer for our design that we've made, like so. So you've just got that border around the edge there. Okay, so six and a quarter high, 
four and a quarter wide. It's a quarter of an inch bigger than the dimensions of the first piece that we cut. So we'll leave that to one side. The next layer is going to be our paper. And again, I want you to have a look, you know, whatever you've chosen as your paper, look at which bit. I wanted this bit here that had all the sort of browns and the reds and the oranges in. So I'm literally going to spin it round this way and take the other edge off. And this wants to be six and three quarter inches square. So again, I'm just going to line that up at six and three quarters. And I want this part here with all that detail on the bottom. So I'm going to spin it round and square that off at six and three quarters and we've now got the basis of our card there so you can see that one's going to nest on there that one's going to go on the front and we've got the bulk of that card blank made all right i didn't think that one would take long now while we've got the guillotine out i also want to cut a piece of craft card and i'm going to cut this slightly smaller than the six by four. I want this to nestle behind here in between the matte layer. I didn't want the dark brown. I wanted the craft card in the background. So I'm going to cut it just slightly smaller than the six by four inches so that there's no sort of overlap with it. So I'm going to take it down to three and seven eighths, which is just an eighth of an inch smaller than the original cut that we made on the watercolor card. So three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So again, that's an eighth of an inch smaller than the original piece. So this will actually go quite nicely behind here and there won't be anything showing around the edges, okay? So just to recap those then, we had our card blank at seven and a half inches square. We had our matte layer at seven inches square and we had our pattern paper at six and three quarter inches square. Then we've cut an extra piece of brown at six and one quarter by four and one quarter. And we've got our piece of craft card at three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Okay. And then the very last thing that I need to do is I'm going to take a little bit more brown and I'm going to cut a six by four piece and we're going to die cut this piece. So just a six by four like we started off, which is big enough to put that die on and keep that to one side. So the rest of it, we can pop all together. I think that's all our die cutting done, uh, all our guillotine cutting done. Pop that away. Pop all the pieces. I always save all the bits until I've finished a project to make sure I don't need any extra pieces. And then what we're going to do is pop the smaller pieces to one side for a second. I just want to get these popped together. And what I did is I actually put, I, in my stash I'd got some ribbon. I'd got the same ribbon in a couple of different sizes. So I've used the wider one around the card and then I've used the smaller one to just make a little bow to go on there. But again, this is all that, you know, the added extras to this are optional. But I just wanted to mention that because I am the world's worst at forgetting to put ribbon on something. <laughs> so again, we're going to put this on before I stick the paper to the mat layer. So again, I've just gone a little way up the card. I just need about that much. I've got a little bit spare there. If will go back in the ribbon drawer, I don't waste anything. And I'm just going to use um, a little bit of double-sided tape. Again, I'm just going to eyeball whereabouts I want that. And it's about, I've got about an inch and a quarter gap at the bottom. So again, on the reverse there, I'm just going to put a little bit of double-sided sticky tape out of my tape runner. And then I'm just going to pop this round about i'm just guessing now i'm just looking at the the bottom here as i say there's just over an inch of the pattern card stuff left at the bottom there and again wrap that round the back before we pop this on our mat layer okay so again i'm going to stay with my tape runner so whatever your tape of choice is here just to get this one onto my centura pearl all the way around there and then this one will mat and layer nicely on top 
of that brown layer. If you want to take the centre out of your brown card, if you want to save some of it out of the centre, then please do that before you stick it down. But that one's going to go on there. And then we're going to pop this one onto our card blank. Okay, so again, I'm staying with my tape runner, but whatever you want to work with, if, you're, if you prefer to use the double-sided tape, the finger lift tape, or whether you're a wet glue person, entirely up to you. Make sure we're opening the right way. I think I did this one. This one's actually... A tent? A top fold. <coughs> yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. So we'll stick with the top fold. So I'm going to put my fold up at the top there. And then we're going to place this one in the centre and create our card blank. So nice and straightforward, just a bit of matting and layering, which we've done so much of now during all the craft alongs. There we go. OK. And then we're going to build up our piece to go on the top of it. So I need to, first of all, I'm going to use the die and just die cut that plain brown. We want another layer just to act as a drop shadow. Now I haven't got all the pieces out of mine, so let me just pop those out because it doesn't die cut the same if you've still got cardstock in your die. It is worth taking it out before you pass it back through the die cutting machine. There we go. So again, pop that one on here. And we're just going to pass that through. And I'm not going to emboss this piece. It is purely going to be a drop shadow behind that piece that we painted. So I just want the flat die cut. So I'm going to pop that in my machine there with the shims and my top plate. And just pass that through to get that shape. I just want the shape to act as a, a drop shadow behind the one that we painted. So we've got that same sized piece and this is just going to help it stand out that little bit when we come to put the pieces together. So again, just release it in several places there. It is very delicate. Take those landlock pieces out. And then I'm just going to start, I think I'm going to go from the bottom. It's a bit more solid at the bottom to just release that out of the die. Okay. Do you know, and even as a silhouette, it looks gorgeous. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, just imagine absolutely. it done in the darker colours, yeah? We're actually just going to offset it slightly so that oh. there's a little bit of that showing underneath to just give that bit of drop shadow. And I'm going to sandwich this between the layers. So I'm just going to make sure everybody's at the same point before we put this last bit together. But it's essentially going to be the background Centura Pearl. Then we're going to pop the craft card on. Then we're going to do this piece underneath as a drop shadow. So we're going to look at positioning this one. Then we've got our top layer. Oh, yeah. And then we've got this one because I just wanted the leaves in the middle to have that little bit of a drop shadow. So that's where we're heading with it next, but I just want to make sure that everybody's got all those layers at the ready. I think we've got time to just throw back to you for a second, Deb, so I'll make sure everybody's got those together. Lovely, thank you. Um, and I, honestly, I'm gonna read you some comments because um, <clears throat> Carol D on YouTube Jam, it's not a Jan card until the craft card shows. <laughs> I absolutely well. chuckled. I, nearly, I, I don't know if you noticed, I did start chuckling. You know, I nearly made my card <laughs> blank out of... And I thought, no, the last twice I've been here, I've used craft card on the craft along. I thought, step away from it, and I couldn't help myself. I felt personally that the brown was too dark in the background, and the shadow didn't show up. So that's why it had to have that little bit. As I say, they know me too well, don't they? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, and she also said, whoever chose all the colours of Centura Pearl is an absolute genius. Every colour is so rich. Um, is. I totally agree with you, Carol, yeah. because they really, really there are. There isn't one of them, I don't think, that I don't I like. Do, I do not, I've never found a colour palette, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Sylve Sparkly on YouTube says, ooh, that would look lovely laid on dark green card behind the oval. Yeah. 
I suppose it depends on your colour choice, but yeah. I totally agree. I think that's a lovely, um, a lovely choice as well. Um, I can see Jenny's still busy away crafting, you know. We'll come back to her before we, we finish the end of the show. Um, we do have, though... And I hope you don't mind, can I just quickly throw to this? Of course you can. Because there's a deal that we don't want you to miss out on that's on the outlet sale. And I'm... Do you, if you'd have come to me two minutes when Jan said she was throwing back to me, I was just going through it and I was just peeking through envelope because I'm trying to get everything out there uh, to show you. Now, I want to get this right. This is the Ultimate Verse Compendium, Compendium. Celebrate. Do you know why? And that, I'll tell you something that threw me. I was thrown when I saw this because I haven't seen this before. So that's why I was, I was away to check with your producer, Nicola, to say, first of all, is the price right? <clears throat> Because the price, $9.99 or $12.49, look at the platinum price. Think about your 17% decreasing knob drop code knob that top. you need to put in there. Um, and I'll tell you why, I, I, I'm serious, Tracy's not getting this back. <laughs> because I saw this. Oh, Tracy who? Where is she? She's not here. <laughs> so come and have a quick look though, close up for those people. I, I, this is why we wanted to bring this in. It's about the celebrate, uh, celebratory um, sentiments. Look at this great news on there. Um, you've got enjoy every moment. I'm so proud of you. Let's celebrate. May all your dreams come true. The best is yet to come. Oh my God. Yes. Cartloads coming up. Um, <laughs> make a wish. Oh, like <laughs> this, what you did there. <laughs> this calls for a huge celebration. Uh, we've got congrats. We've got eat, cake and celebrate. Oh, my God, yes. That's what I'm going to be doing in the break. Um, so happy for you. So that's your um, set of stamps. I'll stand back up. But you're going to get other bits as well because we've got... Oh, inserts, and I was looking through them. This vellum... I'm going to... Tracy Hill. Didn't eat my breakfast there very well, did I? Look at the inserts, vellum inserts with gorgeous foiling in these gorgeous colours. You've got pinks in there, Jan. These are stunning and they're all foiled. Beautiful. And if, if you don't like the vellum, you've got the paper option. Because <laughs> you've got paper as well. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Um, there is uh, smaller sizes as well, so that's your, I think that's your five by seven, this is your four by six. Um, again, with the paper ones you've got in there. Um, I was trying to, I was like this, Jan, that's what I was doing. I was literally, is there anything else in there? <laughs> but I tell you what, for that price, for that price, it's absolutely amazing value. And then you've got lovely envelopes that you can reuse. Because yep. me and my crafting little... Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look at the price. $9.99, $12.49. That's before you even take in con consideration your platinum, well, platinum level, gold level, silver level, bronze level, and the additional 17%, because that's the price. And I wonder if James will do this for me again. That you've got to take up, and you're probably thinking, what is she doing? Bit of John Travolta. <laughs> Little bit of staying alive. There it is. That's the time that you've got left to take advantage of your 17%. Nov drop. Put that in there. We're not going to do it for you. You put that in there. Nov drop into the end of your process when you've got everything into your basket. It is a one per use customer. So it's one, one time, one customer. If you've got a few accounts is all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say because I know there's plenty of you out there that have <laughs> uh, because you can do. Uh, but yeah, this is a great one. So definitely pop that in there and take advantage of that fabulous 17% discount. Don't forget 8pm when that clock runs out it'll drop even more down to 15 percent and for the last part of the day it'll go to 15 percent which i still think on top of everything else jan is incredible the fact incredible. that it's on top of your club inspire yeah, yeah. it's you can't go wrong really can you let's face it absolutely jan can we throw it back to you for the last part we can the, i'm just watching catalog? that clock ticking away and we just do we need to get cracking with this last bit so i've got my gel pen this is all dry now and in the original embossed detail there were some little tiny highlights on top of the toadstool. So I'm just going to go in with my gel pen now and just fill those areas in with the white. So you can just see the little indentations. If you've used the same one that I did, just to fill in and it just adds that extra bit of detail to those little toadstool heads. Now I found with mine that I needed to do it a couple of times because obviously it's over the watercolour paint. So yeah, just, I'm going to leave it until it's dried a bit, I think, and then do another layer just to bring up that white. And then I added, I sort of went a bit rogue and added a few more little 
dots to them as well rather than just the embellishment you know you can do however much you want but why not there we go right so we need to get this bit together now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my craft card onto that brown matte layer so this one just wants centering in the middle of our brown layer like so so again there is a, a border around it because it's just cut slightly smaller than our top layer and then I'm going to go to my wet glue to pop this onto the card just because I've got some ribbon on the card there so I'm just going to use get away the collal purpose here so that I can get a nice stick over not just the backing paper but that ribbon that I've popped across here so on my card this is going to go on the left hand side and I've got roughly an equal border top bottom and left there with that piece so that's going to dry onto onto there like so okay and then the next thing that I want to do is just look at where we're going to position this one underneath because what we want to do is just try and get that little tiny bit of brown showing so it doesn't want to be lined up perfectly so if you flip this over you can see that this fits into the the detail on the back like we did a little bit with the embossing folder all I'm going to do is drop it down a, a little bit and move it over so I've lined it up with the emboss piece brought it down a fraction and just moved it to the left a little bit so that's all I'm going to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tacky glue and I'm going to avoid the center I'm just going to go all the way around the edge here all the edge pieces are going to stick down but those center pieces are going to pop out into the aperture that we've created so as if you're creating a frame around the edge with the glue that's all I'm going to do with it and then literally like I said line it up with the embossed area drop it down literally about a millimeter and over to the left so that it's not lined up properly it looks a bit odd from the back but don't worry we're not going to see that bit that's going to be hidden and then that should fit nicely oops I've got there that I didn't need like so okay now I actually used foam pads on the back of here but again you know your choice depending on what you're going to do with the card you can leave it flat you can actually add foam tape to it if you wish but I just wanted a little bit of elevation so that as we look through that aperture it created its own shadow in effect so we've got the brown layer as a, a drop shadow but there's also a bit of natural shadow because we've raised it over that craft card so I've just gone all the way around the edge with my foam pads there we're going to take those backs off and I'm going at a, a speed now I apologize if I've lost anybody because I can I literally they've got I've got a clock right in front of me on my screen and I honestly don't know where the time goes when we get to this part of the uh, the shows and then again instruction Jan lovely instruction for everything which I think is um, invaluable it's well it's invaluable isn't it it's it's, it's uh it's been so a lovely again, craft along. Just because I'm going onto the craft card, I've added my glue on the back of the foam pads again because this is quite a sort of fibrous one. Now your top piece will be slightly bigger than the craft card. That is what we wanted. I wanted the craft card to sort of disappear underneath just so that we can see it in the middle here. And then if you remember this morning, I used, if you were watching earlier, I used my 3D glue gel. And instead of trying to get this into all these little pieces here, I found it much, much easier to pop this straight onto the card. So where you know it's going to be covered. So all the toadstool heads there, I know that there's going to be a piece over the top of that. I'm going to go slightly smaller. I'm not going to put it on every single piece, but you want enough to support that die cut area that you're putting over the top. So just have a look where you've got all the um, the pieces and all I'm going to do is just pick out the odd leaf that's got a you know a decent size and then I know that it's also going to come in here as well so I can get away with a piece on here 
and just those two bigger areas. I'm not going to worry about this side too much. And then we can lay this one straight over the top. So again, Fabulous. just line it up with the elements that are underneath. And you'll see that it goes straight through. Now then, I didn't need it on that one. That's an extra piece. So I'm just going to get it off there. But you can see how this just lines up with the die cut area that was underneath. And then obviously you will need to leave this to dry. Okay. We're pretty much there with that one. You can just see elements of that brown dropping down underneath. And then the very last thing that I did, and again, this is entirely up to you if you want to add, you know, whatever you wanted to add. I used my Autumn Blessings. And yes, oh, I have yeah. printed this one out earlier uh, rather than doing it now. Um, but again, whatever sentiment, as I say, I was going to go for the Happy Thanksgiving, but it was a little bit too big for the area that I wanted to put it in. But I've just popped this in with a little bit of a, a foam pad here and then the extra ribbon just to add it on and you can see there this was the one that i did at home the only thing again you know me it's got the little pearls on there <laughs> has to have pearls on it's not finished in my world without some little pearls on it me but, neither uh, jan <laughs> but yeah that's my <laughs> signature so is there we go beautiful absolutely beautiful loads of lovely comments coming in we're going to check in back with our jenny just in a second michelle butler on youtube jan i love this i've been trying to figure out how to add a fairy dye to this um and crafted by gaz such a lovely card carol d on youtube i love a jan card seriously she's popped um rosalind russell on Facebook says Jan your demos have been amazing today um, and the lovely Craig Moss Watkins on Facebook says hello everyone from a sunny and cold flagstaff um, I've been watching this great demo she's got a, uh, sorry he's got a couple of these in the basket might have to get them all seriously with that extra discount that Why might not? be well worth and yep. also put I think they would work well with some of the Bella Luna absolutely they would uh, lots of lovely lovely comments coming in I think Stephanie Theodos on Facebook's managed to lose her embossed background and she don't know how oh, it, oh, seriously yes. she's put what am I like Debbie it happens to us all <laughs> Stephanie it happens to us all look underneath something it's yeah. possibly stuck underneath <laughs> something yeah right I'm going to throw back over to our lovely guest who's been with us crafting uh, with our lovely Jan Jenny how's it going I've you got it finished oh wow there loving go, that fabulous. can we go big screen again james thank you oh, <gasps> love that. love 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 that looks stunning and i think i can see um is it the was it the woodland one the background what a great choice yes. That is gorgeous. Well done, Jenny. That looks amazing. Absolutely. They brilliant. really do Thanks. look 3D, don't they, when it, they're, uh, yeah. they're mounted? Yeah. Have you enjoyed it, Jenny? Oh, I've enjoyed it very well. Oh, fine. Oh, fabulous. Fabulous. And do you know what? Sometimes we do do all singing and all dancing things here on Craft Alongs. But sometimes, like this, has just shown you techniques. I just wanted tips. the techniques yeah. today. Yeah. And, and show you how to use them. Yeah. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. They really are. And you can then carry on taking it into the all singing, all that dancing could, it kind could of be things. The, it could be on top of a gift box. You know, you could translate it into 3D crafting. There's so many different ways to use them. But I just wanted to keep it simple and concentrate on that die and Absolutely. embossing folder today. Oh, it's lovely. Well, Jenny, honestly, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, we've had, it's, you, as always, been a lovely, lovely guest. I know we had a few issues at the start with, um, as always, tech technology at yeah. its best and it's worse sometimes but i'm glad you've persevered with us and it's been lovely to have you with us and i hope you do join us again soon jenny so thank you very much for joining us been my pleasure and we'll see you again soon okay bye-bye bye-bye um, so thank you to everybody who's been commenting. Thank you to producer Nicola, James, to our gorgeous Jan with a beautiful project, to our lovely Jenny as well, and Julia. We're not going to forget her. <clears throat> I saw the look she gave him earlier. <laughs> so <laughs> to our lovely Julia as well. But it's not over. Please do join us at 6pm here in the UK. We have got a mammoth cartload for you. So please do join us. We're off to go and grab a coffee and me cake. See you soon.